so I put them underneath me. Uh, I do not surrender, choose, kill me, not free me. Moving through the night, we came to fight, don't make it easy. Hold up, got an army full of gladiators. Monsters, headdresses, guys looking like some rosters. Honestly, there ain't enough power on your roster. You and your mob, we are just some flash mobsters. What is going on, guys? Welcome to the video. You know, ever since quarantine hit, I've become extremely familiar with the grocery store. Like, if I'm not in my apartment, I'm at the grocery store. Or, I mean, maybe sometimes I'm at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru, too. The funny thing to me is that when, when all of this started, most people rushed to the grocery store and stocked up on groceries and toilet paper and hand sanitizer. But what I did was I went to Amazon.com and I stocked up on home gym equipment because like I knew that if I was going to be stuck at home for two or three months or who knows how long like the gym or being able to work out every day that is what's going to keep me sane that's what's going to keep me feeling good even though I can't do all these other things right and that's why right now yeah, I'm super frustrated man So check it out, man. About two or three weeks ago, I was working out at the home gym. I was about to do shoulder press. And normally when I do shoulder press now, I do it with dumbbells because I've tweaked my neck a few times the past year when I've been doing a barbell overhead press. However, Julia was using the dumbbells. So I was like, you know what? No big deal. Let's use the barbell. We'll take it easy today, right? I did three or four sets. My neck felt all right. Maybe like a little bit of tightness. The rest of the day, it felt fine. I went to bed. I woke up the next morning. And I'm not fucking with you, man. Like, I could, I could barely move my head. Now, this time, the pain in my neck, it was the worst that it had ever been. So I stopped working out for a few days and something strange happened. The pain almost completely disappeared after two or three days, which seemed awesome. So I got back in the gym and the first thing I did was I hit the bench press over there. I put on two plates on each side, so 225 pounds. And you have to realize, normally that's a warm up set for me. Like normally I can get 10 or 11 reps easy. I unracked the bar, did one rep, did two reps. On the third rep, I couldn't even get the bar up. It's like on the right side, my body just couldn't press the bar. It's like it just shut off. And later that day, I actually started to notice some numbness and some pins and needles coming down my arm. And I was feeling it in my fingers. And after I did a little bit of research and talked to a few people, it was obvious that I had herniated a disc in my cervical spine in my upper back, or there was a bulging disc, but somehow there was a nerve that was being compressed, and that was causing these, this numbness, but it was also preventing me from activating like my tricep and my pec. At this point, I was pissed off, but I was still hopeful that if I rested a few days, I would heal up. So I came back three days later, I got on the bench and I tried doing some light dumbbell press, 40 pounds on each side. And bro, I could not even get a single rep. It's like the right side of my body, it just couldn't control the weight. So I did what you're never supposed to do. I went on Google and I found people with similar injuries. It had taken them years to get their strength back. And at that point, I freaked the fuck out. I was like, holy shit, I'm about to lose years of hard earned gains just like that. And the fact that it happened during quarantine when like I have nothing else to do, it's been devastating. <sighs> so I've been to a, a couple physical therapy sessions over the last week. And they've told me they're confident that if I keep going in there and allowing them to give me like these really painful massages and I keep doing some of the, the exercises they've laid out for me, like, like that little thing I was doing there, that I should be able to recover in a few months. You know, I, I hope that that's true. I haven't really seen any progress yet, but they did clear me to start working out. So we're about to hop into a workout now. There's a lot of restrictions. I can't do a lot of things. I have to do a lot of unilateral work, lighter weights, higher reps. And if I feel any pins and needles in this hand, I have to stop what I'm doing. But at least, at least we get to work out to some extent. Let's do it. This a war and we accept. Try to set the bar high like BMS. We all point y'all never there. Keep your eyes peeled, monsters in every way.
changed like a soldier trying to keep my mind closed like a All right, workout complete. Yeah, honestly, it, it felt really good to move again, but I'd be lying if I said like it was a super challenging workout. I didn't go for any PRs. My right tricep and chest still feel pretty weak, like extremely weak compared to the left side. But you know, at this point I've accepted this is gonna be a journey back. It's not gonna be a quick fix. Also, y'all are always asking me what these dope white earbuds are. They're called the Everyday E25s from Raycon, and they've been a lifesaver during the quarantine because, you know, for example, I just did a workout. I really needed my music to get immersed into the workout and perform, but Julia's in the other room working. She was on a conference call, so I can't blast music. A lot of times I wanna cook breakfast and listen to a podcast, and these guys, they let me do it all. They're super cool because they come in this nifty charging case. So if you open it up, it's automatically gonna pair with your phone via Bluetooth. You can take out and get up to six hours of listening per charge. When you're done, put them back in here. They're automatically gonna turn off and start charging again. Plus the way they fit in your ear actually isolates outside noise so you don't get distracted by other shit going down. They've increased the bass on these so they really bump in your ear and somehow they're offering them for about half the price of other premium earbuds on the market. Because they're sponsoring today's video, if you go to buyraycon.com slash beast or click that first link in description, you can get 15% off your pair of Raycon earbuds. And now I'm gonna show y'all probably the most requested thing on the channel recently, my French ass toast recipe. It is insanely easy and fast to make. Check it out. Crack two eggs in a bowl. Add one third a cup of milk, two tablespoons of light brown sugar, just a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of salt. And finally, just a tiny little splash of vanilla extract. This is crucial, do not skip this. Then you're gonna wanna break up the egg yolk and then start whisking it up with, uh, with a fork. It should look kind of like that at the end. Put your frying pan on the stove, turn it on to about medium heat, and then spray some olive oil spray on the pan. Once that pan's heated up, grab your bread. Thick sliced white bread is always gonna be best for French toast, but honestly, pretty much any sliced bread will work. Grab a slice, drop it in there only for a second, flip it over once, flip it over just one more time like that. You don't wanna let it soak in there too much. You can let a little bit of the egg drip off of there and then put it on the pan. And after about two minutes, take your slice, flip it over. It should look pretty much like that on top and cook it for one more minute. So that's gonna make you about four slices of French ass toast, the best French toast in the world. Maybe the best breakfast behind breakfast tacos. Those are the calories for the meal. Not a lot of protein, but that's why I always just have a protein shake when I have it. Also, I have a light syrup on the side. I, I like to put a little bit of butter on top. Obviously, that adds to the calories, but that's what's up. See that? That is what I call the money shot right there, bro. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, Bo. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? Let's go. Let's go. Check it out, man. I kind of want to use this video as an opportunity to tell you the steps I'm taking to mentally bounce back from this neck injury. Because the fact is, when something really shitty and unexpected happens in your life, like it's hard to bounce back and it's easy to fall into to a depression. You know, for me, working out, it, it was what kind of started, it was the catalyst for, for my life transformation. It's the first thing I did to take control of my life and it led to everything else. It's also a big part of my business. And you know, some of you guys might be going through a tough time too right now, whether you lost your job because of the coronavirus, you know, maybe your girlfriend broke up with you recently. And maybe you have a family member who just got really sick or, or died. You know, all of this shit, it, it hurts and, and it's hard to bounce back from. So let me tell you a quick analogy. And this is something that was originally told to me by James Altucher. I don't know if you guys know about him. He's an author that I used to read all the time. And we were talking on a podcast once and he told me, when something really shitty happens to you in life, you know, close your eyes and imagine that you are on a battlefield. You're in the heat of battle and you get hit by an arrow. You don't see it coming and it knocks you down to the ground, right? 
what's even more important is what you do next. Because if you stay on the ground, man, you let that arrow and all that pain sink in, then a second arrow hits you. And that arrow is even more dangerous because that's the one that kills you. Instead, if you get up, you're in pain, but you bring yourself back up and you start moving forward, you avoid that second arrow. Yeah, you're still injured, but you don't die. So obviously the question here is how do you avoid letting that second arrow come in and hit you? Because that's the one that's gonna knock you into a deep depression. Now, the first thing that I do in these situations, and I tell you this all the time, I accept my new reality because until you accept your new reality, you, you can't move forward. My new reality is, look, I'm gonna lose some progress. I'm gonna lose some hard earned gains. It fucking sucks, but I have to move forward and rehabilitate myself. Now, after that, I try and create a new plan for myself that I can get excited about. And the key to doing this is to ask yourself, okay, what do I have control over now? There's a lot of shit I don't have control over. I can't change the past. I can't control the fact that I was a fucking idiot and did barbell overhead press when I knew it could probably hurt me again. I can't tell you how many times I've regretted that shit. But what can I control? Well, recently, one of my friends had a herniated disc in their lower back and they found a really good physical therapist that they got them back in the gym lifting heavy. So immediately I hit them up got that information and set up an appointment with the physical therapist. Now beyond that, I got on Google, did a bunch of research. You know, I ordered a new cervical neck pillow from Amazon that's supposed to help out. I ordered this other device that hangs from the door and it's supposed to decompress your, your spine a little bit. And the funny thing is, once I figured out all these different things forward, I figured out this new plan, all of a sudden, I'm excited, man. You know, I have a new path forward. I have all these things I can do and I know they're gonna improve my life. So if you're going through some shit right now, man, I recommend you do the same thing. Let's say you just lost your job. Well, you gotta accept reality, man. It sucks, you're not making any money right now, and you probably can't afford to do what you're used to doing, but it is what it is. What can you control though? Well, you can update your resume and start applying to five jobs every single day. Yeah, in this current economy, you're probably not gonna get your dream job, but there are still some jobs out there. You know, for example, I know someone who just got hired as an Amazon delivery driver. Are you thinking that you gonna come defeat me? To be honest, man, you probably really need me. Listen, I'm Christian Bale on these tracks. Denzel with these facts, huh? You can't even tip the scale with your act. I'm a bear, need a meal, and you barely a snack. I ain't seen nothing tough right now. It is time for the, the highly anticipated and highly requested rubber match. In case you guys missed it, me and Bo have had some, uh, some pretty fierce racing competitions. He won the first race by a hair. I won the second race pretty clearly. But in the comments, there was a lot of people saying, well, in that second race, technically Bo was running to Julia, so we slowed down because he got close. So this time, we're gonna have the finish line be before Julia, so there's no question that he is fully motivated to reach the finish line. Are you ready, brother? If I win, you gotta give this video a thumbs up. If I lose, leave the hate down in the comments, bro. All right, just to be clear, the finish line is first one to reach the pavement right here. Super clear. On your mark, get set, go. Good, 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 Let's take a look at the instant replays to be sure. The brother man, he, he won fair and square. Yeah, to be fair, I have a cervical neck uh, oh disc God. issue. No. It could, you know, you never know what, what the spine can, can affect. <laughs> but uh, no excuses, maybe a little excuse. Go ahead, leave the hate down in the comments. Good game, bro. dinner we got the one and only red curry not as good as pad thai or fried rice but we've been ordering a, a little bit of takeout at night so it's time to make this into the rotation by the way something that all of you should work into the rotation is this show on on fx or hulu dave is little dicky it's about his his life well like a fictionalized version of his life i think honestly it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen, I think. What do you think? It's so funny. I have a lot of secondhand embarrassment when I watch it. I'm like, oh, Dave, no, Dave. But it's really good. Yeah, I can't say that he does the name David a lot of <laughs> justice, at least in the beginning. But obviously, in the long run, he's done a lot of good things for the name David. I am Dave. I'm not Dave. I am Dave. Who's Dave?
bag, a box and a bag in a box. Only on Amazon. Alright, so this is called the traction device and it's designed to like, to pull just a little bit upward pressure on your spine to like decompress your vertebrae. Let's see, uh, let's see how this feels. I feel like I'm shooting a, a weird, like a weird video right now. I feel like this, this thing is like very, this thing is very uh, strange looking to say the least. Yo, it's like, why did they have to make it like black leather, man? This is like, couldn't have made something more athletic looking? This makes it look like it's from used for something else. Anyway, bro, I'm gonna wrap this video up right here. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you so much, bro. Give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, click subscribe, and turn notifications on. Because I drop two videos a week, and you don't want to miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beast this a war and weak set try to set the bar high like bms we all point y'all never there keep your eyes peel monsters in every way the devil already